so welcome. It's me, Gina, again, with the third episode of my podcast where I go to people who I think are interesting and just talk to them. Today with me is Rainbow. Hi, Rainbow. Hello. So why don't you introduce yourself just a bit? Uh, well, my name is Rainbow. It's a long story about that name. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have time, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I live here in uh, Warburg, and I work at uh, System Bloggit. That's the off license, the liquor store, and have been doing that for most of my adult life. Mm. And uh, apart from that, I have different interests in music and acting and juggling and circus. Nice, nice. So you are from Warburg, or uh, have you? Always lived in Warburg, or have you? Uh, because I'm from Germany, yeah. <laughs> so I assume everybody else is from somewhere else, also. So. <laughs> no, actually, I was born in uh, outside of Warburg, you know, uh, and spent my first twelve years in a place called Tongaberg. It's six kilometers outside of town. So yeah, basically, in or around Warburg, my entire life. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you. you Said you juggling and clowning and stuff like this as your uh, like hobby, I guess. Yeah, my main. Or is hobby. it more like a more than a hobby? Well, it's a, a main hobby, but uh, of course, it has turned into uh, kind of a a job as well because I do go out and do uh, public shows and stuff like that. So it's 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 not uh, work, but it's not just a hobby as well. I see. So are you making money sometimes, or is it mostly uh, uh, just zero? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I do make uh, some money. Uh, okay. Not enough to live on. I, I yeah. think if I wouldn't have a system book as my main work, I could have made a living out of uh, oh, doing this. But uh, I think I, I find it much better that to have a main work where you have a salary, you know what you get each month. Yeah. yeah. And then just take the gigs that you want. That sounds interesting. Uh, oh, that is true. Yeah. So when when did you start with this uh, stuff? I think about twelve years ago. Okay. About to thirteen years ago, um, I was doing some other culture stuff in Warburg, and uh, yeah, this is a small town. Uh, all, all people that works with culture know each yeah, other. Yeah. So, and a theater group came and asked me if, uh, hey, we need a fire breather for a show <laughs> okay. on, a, uh, on the fortress oh, would you be interested to learn fire breathing and I said yeah sure so <laughs> why did they come to you huh why did they come to you just basically because yeah as I said cultural people yeah. knew each other and uh, yeah I, I guess I showed some kind of interest in, ah. in it uh, and stuff like that and yeah so I, started, I learned fire breathing and did a f uh, my first show ever, which was horrifying because I suffer from terrible stage fright. Oh, didn't really think that <laughs> one through because uh, when I did other culture stuff, I okay. was always in the background. I was organizing, I was mixing, I was uh, I uh, arranging, I was producing, I was doing everything but being on stage. But I see. Um, <laughs> uh, so there so, I was. So what the fire breath? Uh, fi what is called fire breathing? Fire, fire breathing. Yeah. Okay, so that was your first uh, on stage uh, thingy. Yeah, more or less, uh, of course. Of course, I've been up on stage, maybe just uh, saying a few words, uh, always been hugely terrified. Okay. And throughout the first years we were doing this, uh, I mean, I mean, days before we got on stage, I stopped uh, sleeping. I oh, was shaking. I was, Jesus. I was <laughs> so nervous and I still am. But uh, today I've learned that I've got the skills to pull it through. And the reward yeah. afterwards, when you're feeling so great, is, is worth the... Yeah, nervousness know, the, the, the pain feeling. or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know the feeling I, I, yeah i've seen Good. it before a live show oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh i i have a band yeah my listeners didn't don't i guess don't don't know about that i have a band a metal band and we play really seldom but when we play especially here in in our hometown barbeck then a lot of people come and it's almost always quite full <laughs> yeah yeah and of course, when you when you play, or as I do, uh, juggle or do something in your hometown, uh, you're always more nervous. Yeah, because, that's uh, true. Yeah. If I am in Trollhättan and I perform in front of a thousand people, I know if I 
Can you swear here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if I should. <laughs> <laughs> if I fuck up, I could just get in the car and leave. But yeah. in Warburg, you know, it's, it's going to st- stick with me for, yeah, <laughs> forever. Yeah, people will tell you about it again and again. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm much more nervous performing in front of 50 people in Warburg than a few hundred in Trollhättan or Kungsbacka yeah. or yeah. Where, wherever we go. Absolutely. So that's the, the one uh, topic we have today, like your juggling and clown career but there will be uh, later on we will talk about i don't even know how to say it in english what what is it called in english uh also true we okay. have to use that word uh you, some people call it heathen uh heathen beliefs or but uh, actually the icelandic word uh old norse word also true is most commonly used these days okay okay so just just to tease the listeners a bit so what what is it about just a short description uh well it's it's it has nothing basically very little to do about fighting and going to valhalla it's more of a nature <laughs> religion you know okay. uh that uh yeah so it's for, a religion it's a religion where uh, you uh, salute nature more or less and the forces of nature and energy um yeah i see i see so is it basically your religion or is it something you're just interested in or no it's become my religion i've um i've um what do you say, uh, abandoned the Swedish church and I've uh, applied for a membership uh, for, uh, oh, I don't know the English word for it, but for yeah, for a community, for okay, yeah. Yeah, a, a sanctioned uh, uh, community for uh, also true believers. Okay, cool. But more about the, uh, that later. Yeah. So let's go back to the to the clowns. So I, act like, I guess everybody knows what a clown is, but what what do you do as a clown? Uh, well, there are so many different kinds of clowns, and uh, there's actually no, no right way, I guess. Mm-hmm. A most, I mean, the most common clown is the American Ronald McDonald, overly made up, uh, <laughs> okay. funny guy. And me personally, I don't really like that clown character. Okay. Uh, uh, so, I mean, there are definitely different kinds of brands of clowns. There are clowns that do more mimicry, stuff like that, and... Yeah. They are the ones that do a lot of juggling and, of course, a lot of like doing what I used to call uh, a Chaplin clown, you know, very physical comedy. I see, I see. So Charlie Chaplin, he was a clown or? Yeah, well, well he started off in, as a carnival man. And, I mean, he did pick up a lot of his acts and stunts and like that came from the... Uh, the Carnis, and uh, yeah, mm. so for me, basically, actually, he is one of my biggest inspirations uh, when it comes to clown clowns, uh, because he's he's like more like a real actor, <laughs> isn't he? I don't know, but yeah, but yeah, but uh, he, but he was based in the Carnis. Yeah. Okay, I see. But when he he recorded the movies and stuff, so what we see in the movies is is that cl- the charlie chaplin clown or is it the actor or what is it i, I think it's a uh yeah, both i mean because uh, he does a lot of slapstick humor yeah. and stuff like this okay yeah. yeah so i think it's definitely both and i and many of the clowns you see uh, being a street artist and stuff like that they are in, in essentially actors as well yeah because they are portraying a character oh yeah that is true yeah so so can you be a clown in the theater also i guess that's yeah of course i mean we have actually in warburg uh, well they don't live in warburg anymore but uh, they are also people i look up to very much for inspiration uh one two three stunk okay which are ma- making a comedia clown uh, version of plays I've, they've done hamlet and uh Oh, but with slapstick or what? <laughs> yeah, v- v- very much slapstick, uh, comedia, improvisation, ah, I see. Uh, and dressed as clowns. Uh, so with uh, with the makeup and everything. With makeup and uh, nose and. Oh, interesting! Yeah, and it's uh, <laughs> if, if if you got the chance. Oh, I'm doing a bit of a plugging here for my. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. For my if you have the chance to watch a one, two, three stunk, um, please do because they're really funny. Just don't sit in the front row if you don't want any attention. <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about those bad clowns who people are afraid of? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of funny. Uh, a lot of people say they're afraid of clowns, but... Uh, I don't know why, but do you know what what do they say? I, I think it's a thing. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that... But uh, it can't be just a thing, because even children, like small children who haven't been like... Uh, 
influenced by the media. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's more about uh, for a child when you don't really know that person, much yeah. about uh, the surroundings around you and how things work. Okay. To see a person that is more or less half covered with something, in this case makeup, yeah. uh, and of course it can be a very scary and traumatizing thing. And that's one of those things when we as clowns approach, approach children, uh, if, if we noticed that they are a little bit wary or a little bit scared, mm -hmm. we, we try to approach them uh, very carefully and almost acting scared ourselves and uh, yeah within yeah a, a few minutes you often most often win them over and if you don't then it's just go away don't yeah, force yeah. feed the clown <laughs> 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 i see uh, so tell us about uh, the history of clowning the, Oh, <laughs> like where did it, when, I guess it started thousands of years ago, but uh, not in this particular way. Like actually, we actually, I didn't expect this question. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea, but, but I guess, I mean, jesters and, you know, uh, stuff like that has been around, as you said, for ages. If you look at the hieroglyphs on the pyramids, uh, oh, they are okay. depictions of people juggling. Okay. Uh, so, I, but I guess this kind of clowning we use today i think was came about in the 1700s or something like that okay. but I, actually i'm not sure at all <laughs> <laughs> we can read it online i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but about the juggling how did you learn it uh and when and how why <laughs> uh, when i um When I got this ch chance to do the fire breathing, I went down to the music theater in Warburg, uh, which sadly doesn't exist anymore, okay. to learn uh, fire breathing and uh, uh, all this stuff. And they were also teaching juggling. And I kind of just picked up uh, and uh, started to learn it. And I liked that much more than doing the fire thing. So yeah. I just stuck with it. And uh, I How guess I had a bit of a natural child. I, I was... Uh, nice. <laughs> I was uh, over 30 when I started. Oh, that's so, great. So <laughs> so it, was, it was very late. So, uh, and, uh, But still it worked. Yeah. Well, out good, yeah. 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 I mean, it's a, it's a meditative thing to juggle. So, of course, uh, uh, for example, I've noticed that uh, when I'm dating or uh, seeing somebody, I tend not to juggle that much. But when I've broken up and, and, and <laughs> I am heartbroken, <laughs> I need to, to uh, think of other things, I mo my mostly often do my big leaps of improvement because... Uh -huh. Because when you're juggling, you just have to concentrate on the pattern, and it's uh, yeah. all, all it, it's all mathematical. So you know you can always. Uh, uh, so how is? The, can you explain that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that like? I can give it a try. Uh, but you know the regular juggling. Mm -hmm. You always uh, when we have three balls crossing. Yeah. One of these uh, throws is called a three. Okay. So if you throw these balls three times, one, two, three. Okay. If you add these numbers. It becomes nine. You throw three plus three plus three. Okay. And since you've thrown them three times, you divide it by the number of throws, and mm -hmm. then you can see that this is possible, and you'll be doing it with three balls. Ah, okay. And uh, you can then also calculate that uh, the four-ball juggling pattern uh, is called a four. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that you can throw a four and a three at the same time because they will land at the same time. If you question four three, they will both land in your right hand at the same time okay so you can always calculate is this trick possible can you throw it like this and i guess that's what why it was a bit easy for me to pick this up because i love maths okay. so I, i didn't have to spend any unnecessary time trying tricks that weren't <laughs> uh, that were impossible to do from the start i could just you know write it down can i throw this yes i can interesting cool cool <laughs> so 30 years old <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, they're still <laughs> How old are you? Anyway? I am 37. So. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, a bit you late, look younger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so where do you do this juggling stuff? I mean, the question is more like, so when you do your uh, your um, act, yeah. so basically is it... Uh, 
in a theater or is it outside somewhere or at parties or how does it work? Yeah, <laughs> you got all three right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, we've done theater shows and we've also done, you know, weddings. Then it's, of course, fire. Uh, yeah, uh, big events like when Ring House had its, I would think it was 25th birthday. Uh, it was one of my few gigs, uh, actually, f- f- first gigs, actually, with my stage fright was... I was I was dying fifteen hundred people and Ingvar Olsberg I was man what have I done <laughs> <laughs> who is Ingvar Olsberg uh, he's a uh, fa- famous Swedish uh, TV host oh. <laughs> he currently hosts Bingo Lotto I think oh nice <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but it worked out well yeah uh, yeah I think so uh, the power plant's still there so <laughs> um, yeah Ringhals is a is a atomic power plant here yeah and near Valbeke <laughs> yeah and I mean so, and we'd also do my favorite weekend of the year. Uh, is uh, Jutebosvarvet where we have access to the entire area for three days, uh, the handicap run, um, the regular run, and the children's run. And it's a marathon or a half marathon. Half a marathon, the yeah. world's biggest half marathon, actually. Oh, cool! And uh, then so we do, are there. What do you do there? Run? <laughs> uh, no, I, we, you can run for an organization called the Clowns Without Borders. Okay, and uh, we are there to, uh, well, yeah give our runners uh, an energy and we are there to raise money of course for mm-hmm. what uh, cl- uh, yeah clowns without borders do okay um, yeah all over the world and so we just uh, you know attend warm-ups uh, we run with the handicaps kids and help them and they are so fantastic because they give you so much love that's yeah f- and yeah help the kids and yeah just clowning around I, b- basically i just walk around three days act and act like a kid <laughs> So. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and in St. Gothenburg, is it once a year or something? Yeah. yeah okay. And my favorite weekend of all year, actually, I, I love it better than Midsummer or uh, uh. Uh, Christmas. I, <laughs> yeah. the, the feeling of being, you know, 20, 30, 40 clowns and uh, volunteer workers. And uh, during nighttime, we go out and eat and nice. have a couple of beers, no more than a couple, because yeah. the clown can't smell like gasoline the day <laughs> after. Um, <laughs> that is the, true. <laughs> so, and we often are so tired because these yeah. are eight days. Uh, eight hour days yeah. so uh, we have a beer or two uh, yeah. and then yeah just laugh talk how many are you there huh how many people are you there so like uh, uh, we, we 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 wear it from uh, we've been wear baba <laughs> worried uh, t- from 20 people to upwards 40 uh, because there are also oh, uh, volunteers that inform people around yeah. uh, the area about clowns without borders and stuff like that and those people are from like Gothenburg area or where are they from uh, mostly of them are based in Stockholm uh, there are some people from Gothenburg there's me and my friend Morten from Warburg and mm-hmm. uh, we have a, f- a couple of uh, fantastic uh, young girls. I, uh, well, they're close to the thirties now, but mm-hmm. for me, they're still young. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, from Malmo, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So it's it's fantastic. One year we had uh, see if I get this name right now. Gesenja Acrobats from Congo, okay, uh, accompanying us, and that was really cool. What do they do? Well, they did. Uh, uh, yeah, they were just uh, acrobatting around. <laughs> okay, okay, like uh, like in the circus or. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, they are a group that helps uh, kids with problems in Congo. Okay. By uh, learn, yeah, teaching them uh, acrobatics and stuff like that. Yeah, just giving See. giving them something to do. Yeah. And they are they are working with uh, clowns without borders. So we had up had them up. At Gothenburg Run one year. You talked a bit now about clowns of without borders. Perhaps you could just describe like a bit what what uh, that's an organization which is uh, like worldwide. Yeah, it's an international organization. Uh, it was started in 1993 by, and I got a note here because I'm so bad at names. <laughs> Tortel Patrona, and I'm sorry about that uh, pronunciation if I got it wrong. Uh, he in 1993 were asked uh, in. Uh, he was working at a kid's home, I think, in Barcelona. Okay. And the kids wanted him to go to Croatia uh, to uh, entertain the um, re- refugee children there. So he went there and did that, and it was uh, a smash hit. And then he basically started what was con- uh, going to be Clowns Without Borders, called Payasas Sin Fronteras. <laughs> huh? uh, <laughs> My Spanish is so-so. So, so what they what they do basically is go to refugee camps or something. And yeah, entertain. Yeah, refugee camps, um, uh, houses in uh, in Asia where uh, yeah, the, 
that hosts uh, girls that has been liberated uh, from uh, bordellos okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, try to uh, evoke a sense of hope for the future with laughter. I mean, okay. so much starts with laughter. If you can laugh, then you have hope. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. And I remember in Sweden, this organization was started by a guy called Nalle Lanela. Uh, it doesn't sound Swedish. <laughs> no, I think it's Canadian, okay. uh, if I remember. Sorry, Nali, if I was born there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he actually said something at an exhibition in Stockholm a few years back that really stuck to me when it came to so he was doing this for the uh, shows for Bordellos. And he said mm. that uh, before going on stage, he asked himself, he got a bit uh, nervous or doubted himself. And said, what, to himself, he said to himself, what right do I have to make these people laugh? Uh, who am I to come here and try to make these people have gone through terrible, terrible things uh, mm. and try to make them laugh? And then he got on stage and the people there, the girls, they started to laugh like hell. Mm-hmm. It was just laughing, laughing, laughing. And as I said, I'm really not that funny. <laughs> he said. <laughs> uh, and then he realized that probably the more you've been through that is horrible, the more you have the need to laugh. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, and that really stuck to me. And I think he's very right there. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you haven't been on on uh, in, on one of those missions yet. No, no. Uh, I've been thinking about it uh, years ago. It, there were long trips, uh, you know, several months, and I couldn't get time off from work. Uh, so uh, now they are doing a lot of uh, shorter tours, especially down to Greece mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, refugee camps there and I, I might go um i've been thinking about it two and two and fourth but also now here in sweden i understand that they are going to the refugee camps and uh, me and my friend morten uh, mm-hmm. is is actually checking up on if we can yeah do something like that uh, in or close or yeah in about warburg hamstad gothenburg uh, i heard they are building a new refugee home in himle uh, like or it's it's planned to be there yeah so that would be yeah. a first yeah. stop which would not be that far away <laughs> no absolutely and i mean we have done some uh, 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 circus practices at the uh, culture school and in warburg uh, with that has had a lot of uh, immigrant children coming there and uh yeah, it's it's fun and rewarding, and they're so appreciative uh, that something is happening because yeah. they just sit out there in the ca- ca- camps outside of Warburg. That and is true. Yeah, have nothing to do. So I mean, they, you can't even come to Warburg because there's no bus, no. or perhaps one bus per day or something. So yeah, yeah it's weird to put them there. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I remember that they had no way to get back, but uh, they, there were a few volunteers that uh, that dro- drove them back to the refugee uh, mm. place uh, in their private cars, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yes. So do you do, like, children pa- children's parties also? Or uh, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens if a, if it's a friend or... Okay. Uh, if, well, if the payment is right, you know. <laughs> yeah, give me, give me 10 Gs and I'll, <laughs> I'll whip up some balloons for you. Um, Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, it's become very popular balloon animals. So oh, it's nice, actually nice. what we do mostly these days are balloon animals. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> so but, what is it? Balloon animals? Uh, juggling? Uh, fire. Fire and... Uh, a bit, a, a bit acting, a bit magic, uh, card oh, tricks magic and so. stuff. Uh, and uh, now we, because if, yeah, we do clowns and we do a bit more adult entertainment as well. Mm-hmm. well not strip tease, but uh, <laughs> yeah, not maybe not suitable, not that funny for kids. And okay, yes. since we have been doing this, I mean, Gothenburg shows and uh, yeah, uh, Fallen Stalker and Trollen, bigger venues. Uh, it, it, and I have my regular job. I, it really doesn't hold my interest to go and do balloon animals for 15 kids that are four years old and half of them are probably scared to death of yeah. me anyway. So, <laughs> uh, so no. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Very nice. Do you have something more to tell about the clowns? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, so, but we might get back to it. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but then uh, let's talk about... Uh, Oh, Satro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what do we have here? I wrote... Uh, basically, I would like to know how you ended up in in this 
whole thing? How yeah. how did it start for you, basic uh, personally? Yeah. Uh, first off, I would like to say that I'm you know I am a believer, and what I believe is what I believe. I'm not. I don't speak for anybody else who believes in Asa True. There is no. Mm-hmm. There are no general guidelines, more or less, except for the Edda, the Bible. And but of course, as with all religious text, you can, if you want to, interpret it uh, however you want. Yeah. So this is my take on it, and I guess some also true friends out there. Hello, uh, you probably won't agree with me on everything I say, but uh, I know that you will respect what I believe, and I respect if you believe it a bit differently. Uh, how did I end up with? Uh, started with this. I, I, I remember growing up uh, when we had to go to theaters or re- read religion in school. That I was, I, I was very much into. I, I, I liked the old Norse religion best of all the religions. And funny thing is that I also I felt such a great sympathy for the god Loki, who is basically a bra- bad person. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I thought he was kind of bullied, and I still do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's not uh, totally all bad. Mm. Uh, I remember just feeling sympathy for him and, and really liking these stories. And then as time passed on, you know, you don't think about it any, uh, that much. And uh, a few years back, I, I went to Iceland uh, to work as a circus instructor. It's funny how things always <laughs> kind of... <laughs> Small uh, world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was thinking about that yesterday, that if it wasn't for circus, I wouldn't have had some of my best friends and I wouldn't be... Uh, and also true believer and that's yeah. fantastic because i somebody asked me to do a fire breathing <laughs> 13 yes, years ago yeah. um and uh yeah and there i became very good friend uh, friends with uh, a guy called ellie erlendor mm-hmm. uh, which whom I you met yeah, yeah. and um we became really good friends uh, almost from day one or day two. <laughs> and uh, as time progressed, uh, we came so close. So when it was time for him to uh, get married, mm-hmm. he wanted me to be a witness, which is essentially like, a, uh, what's it called? A best man. Yeah. But in Asatru. And uh, standing there, this is uh, three years ago, almost to the day, I realized that, man, this is, this is for me. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, I'm standing here at a ceremony I've never witnessed before in my life in a language I cannot understand. So was <laughs> it in Icelandic? Felt, or? It was in Icelandic, okay. yeah. yeah. But it just felt so right. Uh-huh. And then after that, I started searching. Okay, I think I believe, but how do I know if I believe? And then just one day I just got this, you know, what's it called? Uh, vision or something, you know, yeah. uh, that somebody said to me, everything is all right. And I said, and then just, yeah. Got it clear in my head that okay, mm. now I believe. So interesting. So what is it you believe in? Could you describe like the the basic idea yeah. of it? Uh, forces of nature. Uh, I mean, uh, I literally don't believe that when there's a thunderstorm outside that Thor is uh, <laughs> riding his carriage <laughs> and throwing Mjolnir and creating mm-hmm. lightning. Uh, I think that uh, Odin is a. Uh, uh, representation of lightning as of energy okay so i believe in the forces of energy of nature uh freya for example is a goddess of fertility and i believe that uh yeah there's a fine line before thinking of them as physical people Mm -hmm. and just forces of nature and for me it's very clear in my head but i Every time I try to explain it to people, I don't talk about this that much because it, it's actually a private thing. I just yeah. felt like doing this at <laughs> this time. Uh, it's a very fine line. And it's so hard. For me, it's clear in my head yeah. how everything works. But I guess that's for, for everyone who is uh, li- religious. You, It's more like a feeling and it's difficult to, to describe it in words. Yeah, yeah. That's why all... Uh, all descriptions are very like flowery and very colorful and so on yeah so yeah i guess so uh, but it's a po- polos what is it called like yeah. many gods religion po- poly polyethic poly yeah i believe yeah <laughs> yeah actually uh yeah there is uh, there are uh 51 uh, deities and uh, what, what also appeals to me very much is of the, all these deities there, this, it's actually 29 goddesses women okay. and uh, 22 men Interesting. so yeah. it's uh, it's almost uh, feminine, <laughs> feministic but uh, overly feministic uh, 
So, of course, uh, the, most of the real strong uh, characters, um, uh, they are male. You have yeah. Odin, of course, and uh, uh, Frey and uh, Thor. But also you have Freya, mm -hmm. which is uh, a heroine to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, she she is uh, amorous. I mean, she sleeps with anyone she likes. And when Loki confronts her about it, she says, F shut up or I'll smack your teeth in. <laughs> you have nothing to do. And I kind of like that. Man, that, that's a thousand years ago. And we still have a hard time accepting that the, a, a woman could be with several men. I mean, <laughs> it's, <Absolutely>. it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I think personally, sorry for all you Christians, that we took a giant backstep when we joined Christianity mm. because... Uh, uh, people say that Christi Christianity forced itself upon us, but in very many districts, it, it, we actually just voted it in because we mm. we had to be Christians to uh, trade yeah. Absolutely. with other yeah. countries. Yeah. So it was a political decision, especially in Iceland. It was stated that the thing, yeah. now we're Christians. <laughs> Is, was it a, a king or something? Or how did it uh, In Iceland, it was, a, it was more or less a vote at the Althinger. Oh, okay. I hope I pronounced that right, Ellie. <laughs> um, and in 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 Norway, uh, which basically Sweden was a part of, uh, it was uh, enforced by uh, Olav Tryggvason. Who was? Who was the king. Okay. And uh, yeah, he m did use some force, of course, but uh, yeah. but ma mainly he asked people. Yeah, but basically back then, you as the people were the same religion as your masters were, I guess. Yeah, 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 and uh, well, and also I think uh, it's very interesting is that uh, if you're down here in the south of Sweden, uh, you find uh, uh, many place names to Odin or Thor or you know Thorsby uh, stuff like that. And when you go up north, there's much more uh, uh, names like mm -hmm. for uh, Frey. Of course, there are exceptions. I mean, Vestra Frölunda yeah. Frö is uh, another word for Frey. Okay. Um, yeah stuff like that but so they were different kind of beliefs different deities were um, differently important okay uh, yeah. in various places yeah absolutely the i mean in christianity you have the same thing so the roman catholics are more for for maria she is really a not a goddess but almost yeah <laughs> and uh, the protestants just say yeah that's the mother of of our jesus and that's it basically yeah yeah so uh what what there are rituals also i guess because you you mentioned the wedding yeah uh the, the, yeah but the as I understand it, there are no fixed rituals before weddings or uh, uh, baptizing and stuff like that. There are varieties within the different uh, communities in, in Nordic countries. But of course, what we all share is the blut, and uh, what where we, we sacrifice uh, uh, to the goddess. We talk to the gods uh, mm -hmm. and sac make a sacrifice and... Uh, yeah, you can either do that in groups, which uh, has been very popular, I understand, in Gothenburg. Okay. Big uh, group. Or you can do it privately, which I do. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do it 12 times a year, or you can do it four times a year, which I do. So So what do you sacrifice? Uh, mostly uh, alcohol. <laughs> 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 uh, no, it's, uh, it, it's, it, 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 it has differed throughout the blutes I've been doing. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, beer or mead or uh, fruit, okay. uh, yeah, stuff like that. No Be goats and stuff. No <laughs> goats. No, no goats. No blood sacrifice. And uh, actually, that, that wasn't uh, that common as people think. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know, of course. But when I read about it, and I, I think this is kind of yeah. Uh, if if you have a goat or a cow that gives you milk, you, you you're not going to chop its head off and spill its blood out on the ground because to, to please the gods yeah. and i don't think the gods would ask you to either <laughs> <laughs> or it, but if you're gonna eat it then eat yeah it. but then yeah true absolutely so it's it's a nordic uh, like religion it, yeah so this which yeah is it oh i guess it's old but but it is it different now than it was like a thousand years ago yeah, uh, I, I think it is because, firstly, we don't know that much on how they did actually use the religion or how important it actually was. Mm -hmm. um, but 
Yeah, there are stories uh, that uh, every ninth year they sacrifice nine nine uh, entities of every living creature in Uppsala, including nine uh, humans. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's only accounted for in one text, and the text was written by a Christian. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so it, it could be true, but it could also be a, a description uh, as to the savaged savage vikings and the yeah. savage northmen uh awesome. so was it the religion of the vikings back then or yeah and actually that's that's what people mostly i mean think it's about and i i, I see it like this uh, we were always talking about the murdering and killing and going to valhalla mm -hmm. uh but the vikings only used this religion for 200 years and was probably around for a thousand years and we were most of us were farmers. Okay. Uh, I don't believe that you have to kill somebody to go to Valhalla or die in battle. Mm. I think you have to live an honorable life. Be the best man you can be, and then you're welcome to Valhalla, but not necessarily. Uh, Freya gets mm. half the slain, it says in the text. So then you can come to her halls in Sesrumnir. And there's also some evidence that some people go to Thor's halls. and uh, So it's not just Valhalla. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, but uh, so what? What did? It, where does it say that it's there? Uh, like a book or something? Yeah, uh, and I have this one here. It's uh, the Edda, mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, this contains a uh, uh, what is called prosaic version, a more readable version. I see, uh, which was written down by Snorri Sturluson. I can't remember the year right now. Okay, it's in Swedish. Or? This uh, this one is in Swedish, yeah. Okay. And then in, later in, in this edition, I have it's all the original text uh, translated into Swedish, but uh, trying to use the uh, what's it called the verse, uh, the rhythm of the verses, because it's all written in verses with, with ah. rules on how would the words you, should alliterate. Would you mind to read a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's in nothing it's Swedish. Long, so I don't know if it's uh, still if it's rhymes. Then <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't necessarily r uh, rhyme. It's more alliteration. Uh, okay. uh, that the, the second. Um, The second uh, syllable in the first word and mm -hmm. the second syllable in the third word are always a vowel. I Stuff see. like that. Okay. They're very, very... Uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of... Uh, you don't think about it at first, but when okay. you start to read about it, you think about it more and more. So, And uh, the, the, the most, one of the most famous texts is uh, Havamal, which are basically rules on how to live your life. Okay. And uh, I love it. And what I find so fascinating about it is that uh, I think I might be wrong here, my heathen brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, there's actually only two verses in Havamal that states that you uh, has anything to do with fighting and weaponry. Okay. As, and that is as many verses that contains that you should not drink too much alcohol. <laughs> Not too much, okay. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. It actually says that uh, a person that drinks is just a fool. Yeah, I mean they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you drink too much, exactly. So, so yeah. yeah, and uh, so it's it's actually yeah, it has not not that much to do with violence at all. It's yeah. it's basically uh, yeah, living rules on how to be a good person. Is it like those Ten Commandments, or is it more like a longer text? Uh, yeah, we. There are it, it, there are a kind of like ten commandments. Uh, we call it the nine noble virtues. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll see. If I've written down it in English here because I, of course I, I know the Swedish by, by heart. But yeah. And this, these are the nine noble virtues: how to be a good person and come into uh, Valhalla or yeah the afterlife. And it's courage, truthfulness, honor, fidelity, discipline, hospitality, industrious, industriousness self-reliance and uh, perseverance and i mean one of the most yeah one of these keys is hospitality mm -hmm. you are supposed if somebody knocks on your door you're going to let him in you're going to give him a roof and you're going to give him a good meal mm -hmm. and when he's when he goes away or she goes away you send you send with them a gift okay and uh, yeah Does this happen sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> I try to live by these uh, yeah. these nine virtues, and uh, yeah, it it, uh, it has happened that people that I hardly know needs a place to stay, and uh, yeah, but of course that also happened before I started believing this. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so. absolutely, I guess uh, you already have been a person like that, and now you found something. Which lives up to your standards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, and and standards which I wish to live up to. Yeah, already before you found them. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Cool. So let's talk a bit about the demographics. So how how many people are in this religion? Uh, in Sweden, I, I I think I read somewhere that it was up about uh, three thousand people uh, okay. in different uh, kind of communities and stuff like that. Okay. But probably m- many more uh, because. Uh, Do you have yeah. com- communities, or how does it work? Yeah, we have like uh, Fun- Aid is uh, the biggest uh, community. Uh, mm. I can't remember how many people that's in it. it mm. it's, it's not many though, but uh, uh, and there are a couple of others. Uh, are there local communities, or are they somehow different? Like, yeah, like Fun Aid is uh, based on, as a, a big community, which is sanctioned as a. a What's it called? Yeah, a, a religious society by the government. I see. Okay. Um, and um, then they have what we call then a, a blue log, uh, where different, they have teams. Gothenburg has one, I, I know, and Uppsala has one, and mm-hmm. Stockholm has one, and what? I think Holland has one. And that is when you're bluting, if you want to do it with other people. Uh, that's yeah, blue team. Blue team. Blue. T- ah, so B-L-O-T. like blue T. Yeah. So what does it mean? No, that's the sacrificial ceremony. That so you're blo- bleeding together with other people. <laughs> no, 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 not, not anymore. <laughs> but I, I guess it comes a bit from that, maybe. Ah, okay, so so know. like uh, blood brothers or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I okay. don't know. That's or or w- w- how could you explain? Uh, because I I don't quite get it. <laughs> so what what is it? Or is it just just uh, Yeah, people they go, you know or they go together for the blutes and do them as a team and uh, they, what are the blutes uh, those are the prayers as i was telling you about where we a sacrifice i see it's ah, called a blute ah, yeah. okay now i get it yeah. <laughs> so but uh, for me it's very personal so when i blute i always blute alone I'm, i might be doing something uh, with the teams mm-hmm. when i get more I don't know, comfortable or you yeah, know, yeah. whatever. But right now, I mean, it's ridiculous. I was actually up uh, yesterday and did the midsummer mm-hmm. blute, and if you feel ridiculous, I'm standing there in the middle of the nature. I have a place I always go to, and I talk to the gods. I pour uh, beer or food or whatever. Eat, mm-hmm. eat one, eat or drink one part. Give one part to the ground. And you're basically talking to yourself, and you back in your head, you somehow also think that I hope to God. <laughs> nobody shows up here now they kind of think i'm crazy <laughs> i mean I, i'm kind of semi known from system blog and yeah. you know they would go oh look there is the guy from system blog having a beer and talking to himself <laughs> i mean <laughs> i mean that's awesome <laughs> why not <laughs> great so you, uh, so do you know other people here in Varberg? yeah actually the, the funniest thing was that the, as i decided The day after I got this, no, the day after I joined Foon Said, mm-hmm. uh, a guy comes in uh, and he asks me, where do you keep the mead? And uh, I said, oh, it's over here. And we went over to the mead and I, I noticed he had a hammer, a Thor's hammer, a necklace. Okay. Uh, and I said, oh, th- that's a nice hammer. And he said, oh, thanks. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use the mead for. I said, okay, so you're, uh, you're also true. And he said, yes. Uh, Uh, are you part of any community congregation and yeah. said, yes uh, i'm a member of phone say said and i i just joined them yesterday <laughs> you know <laughs> it's so strange <laughs> i guess uh, you work with alcohol <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah but the timing was i mean it was, it was really weird uh interesting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So in the before we started recording you you told me a bit about uh, the problems with racism and so on because I guess the imaginary so like the pictures and the the words I I reused by by some racists uh, all over the world basically yeah so I guess p- people get confused about this yeah i mean it does happen now i I wear a hammer myself that people ask if i am a racist and i mean it's ridiculous because actually it's the other way around Mm. Um, and that's also why i wanted to go on this podcast but normally this is a a private thing for me but it has become you know with the uh soldiers of odin and everything um uh, ridiculously uh, uh yeah 
connected to racism and mm -hmm. it's all wrong. I mean, of course, we have the Valhalla dying battle. Uh, for me, that is a kind of a, the, what is it, 72 virgins that the Muslims yeah, have. Yeah. Uh, the Vikings leaders used that as a mm. way to make the people uh, Follow. dare. Yeah. yeah, dare to go out and fight and die. Uh, I see. Yeah. As I said, for a thousand, 800 other years, we were just farmers. We, so it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, that's, of course, is what Hollywood does movies about. And that's, mm. of course, what uh, racist groups or racist agendas uh, pursue. We were proud, skillful, tough Vikings. No, basically, mostly we were farmers. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Vikings did mostly trade. Of course, they did brutal and horrifying things. Uh, but <laughs> then again, which religion or which group of people have never done that i mean absolutely yeah. mo most uh, most uh, groups of everything anything has been like that and yeah the thor's hammer is i, I think this is very very uh, funny and i know that there are people out there now who's gonna hate me for this but if you're a swede and you wear a hammer and says that you're proud to be swede uh races shouldn't mix and stuff like that then you got it all wrong i mean thor is the greatest of god but he was a risk, uh, race mixed person okay his father was odin of course mm -hmm. but his mother was a giantess hmm. called jord mm -hmm. so he was a race mixed so why would you wear the hammer as a sign that you don't like mixing of races then you're just <laughs> stupid sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> but th that's actually how i feel about it and, yeah. and it's the same thing with the soldier of odin crap that uh, I, I read the finnish group said that uh, we believe in finland for finnish people well odin several times mixed with other races he he laid down human women he laid down giantesses mm. He had no problem with race mixing or mi being with other races. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's so stupid and confusing. And now that the leftist comes out and they say, if you have a Thor's hammer, then you're a racist. They, mm. they kind of all, they are supposed to be the learned one, the, yeah. the, the leftist or people that are for immigration. Uh, they're supposed to be the smart one, but they're buying off the racist's uh, yeah. faulty beliefs instead of educating themselves and i think that's sad mm. i mean but i guess it's because the religion is quite small and racism is so big yeah, yeah. It's, it's difficult to uh, to, to get away uh, so, so to to put it away the racism so, yeah because that's what everybody is talking about and not a lot of people uh, talk about the religion because it's so old yeah, and yeah. so small. Yeah. And of course, the symbols, of course, like in many other cases, uh, I mean, the Sun Cross and uh, Narcissism yes. uh, gets stolen. But uh, me as a believer, I would like to <laughs> mm. get that back. And uh, yeah, because as I said, one of the uh, uh, nine virtues is even hospitality. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Okay, so I have here that uh, you guys have many festivals, or many, I don't know, festivals like Winter Nights, Jule, and then Sigbul, <laughs> something, something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, I think they actually are, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, ah, yeah, Sigurblut. Oh yeah, okay, uh, that was the one uh, you did yesterday? Was no, it? I did the uh, uh, Midsummer Blut. Ah, okay. I do Midsummer Blut, uh, Yule Blut, uh, Spring Equinox Blut, and uh, Fall Equinox Blut. Uh, those are the ones that I do. Um, yeah, but they're basically... Uh, yeah rituals and festivals of course mm -hmm. um i don't know how common it is that people do all these these days actually mm -hmm. the funny thing is that uh, uh, in havamel i can't remember the verse right now it actually says that it's better not to uh bloat and talk to the to the gods uh do it less frequently mm -hmm. uh more than more frequently oh okay. <laughs> that was the bad translation <laughs> ever but you should you shouldn't bother the gods if there is no need to okay and uh, also, so, when it comes to my uh, our, our ritual and stuff, and I mean, I, I don't go down on my hands and knees and pray, uh, please, Odin, send me, or Freya, send me the most beautiful woman. I would uh, cherish you forever. I just talk to them, say thanks. I could ask for a favor, watch over my friend or mm. help uh, with this. But mostly we just show gratitude and thankfulness for being alive. And well, at least I do, as I said, they are different okay yeah, yeah. Um, but that's my interpretation 
that uh, you give thanks and yeah it's just so strange because when i go there i'm always filled with anticipation and when i after i leave the blue place i have i always go to the same place yeah. i feel so content mm -hmm. so that's that's cool. really awesome cool do you uh dress up spe especially or uh i don't um but i do know that uh, a lot of people do uh, have kind of medieval clo clothing or even i mean clothes made from wool or traditional okay. uh, what's garments or what it's called yeah. and very many people are drinking out of horns oh, <laughs> so <cool. laughs> and i am going to buy a horn myself mm -hmm. uh, at one point actually i have a small horn over there which was given ah, to yeah, me yeah, by yeah. my friend uh, alda hi alda uh, which i got for a birthday which has a rune inscription on my name and her birth date uh, but that's for that's for spirit shots <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, and i am getting a horn most because i like the material i mean it's living uh, mm. i was talking about this you the listeners can't see it but uh, yeah. gina can uh, this is a uh, thor's hammer around yeah. my neck and it's actually cut down from a whale tooth Sand it down from oil too. I mean, it's living material, yeah. so I think it's cool. Nice. <laughs> but your friends, like those in Iceland, so so on the wedding, did they dress up, or was uh, it a normal? It was. Is, a, was it outside or was it? It was outside. Yes, okay. and uh, it was. Uh, they were dressed up in uh, yeah uh, traditional wedding clothes. Uh, the bride and groom, uh, the 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 gude, the priest. Uh, he was dressed up in a uh, cloak and stuff like yeah. that, and he had this giant horn, which uh, then went to everybody who was at the wedding. Ha had a, had a, if they want to, could have a mm -hmm. sip from it, and then offer some to the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it was how big was that horn? <laughs> the, the horn was it, it was enormous. <laughs> Although he, he did actually refill it several times, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it was uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, not a meter in length, yeah, but yeah. almost. I okay, it must have been one big ass animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you forget something? Because I only have my stuff which I wanted to ask. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm done basically. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Um, no, not re not really. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I think we, uh, <laughs> we we did went small. How, how long has have we been going on? Do you have a it's uh, 50, uh, oh, uh, 52 minutes now. Oh, yeah, so, so I have ten, uh, eight minutes that I can ramble on about whatever I want, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I guess what I would like to say, that uh, especially to all you leftist people out there, uh, please read up, and uh, if you can, uh, I don't, I don't mean attack physically, but verbally say to a person that your beliefs are all wrong, and the the the... Uh, one of the evidence for this is the uh, hammer you have around the neck. Uh, mm. You have so much to gain. You can always gain more by knowledge. And don't accept this. I mean, when it came to uh, Sons of Odin, uh, we talked yeah. about this earlier, there was a, a, a writer for Expressen who uh, said as a connection to the Sons of Odin that uh, Odin only had one eye. That meant that he was narrow-minded. And he actually believed that, and mm -hmm. that was the truth. And uh, for you, all you people who don't know know this, is that Odin sacrificed his uh, his eye into Mimir's well to gain all the knowledge in the world. So it was it's exactly the opposite. Mm. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get that out there somewhere. So absolutely. Uh, so it's uh, yeah. Also, through is has much to do with forces of nature and loving, and not so much to do with killing and being yeah. racist or prejudiced. Of course, you can find those passengers, uh, and you can, Everywhere. if you can, uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, find those passages, and you can uh, interpret it that some way. Uh, so, but I mean, for, just for an example, it comes to hospitality. Mm -hmm. I just took a book here and I just opened one page <laughs> and thought I, I was going to read one verse to you. Okay, uh, great. And uh, yeah, I, I actually just opened up at hospitality. It was by pure chance. <laughs> and it's, uh, I can, I, it, this one doesn't say which verse it is. It's one of the um, uh, early verses in Havamal. And it says, uh, the newcomer needs fire. His knees are numb. A man who has made his way over mountains needs food and fresh linen. Hmm. And I mean, that, that says... Welcome, foreigners. Don't kill them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree. So, so uh, anything you would say? What, 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 what it was super say? interesting, actually. Yeah. And you're just an interesting guy because you do a lot of different things. 
I, I wouldn't say that most people just do one thing, but they have basically the work and the children and then they <laughs> go on with their life. Yeah, or they play football or yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. soccer or something maybe more Which is common. okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I used to play the, the synthesizer myself being a musician before yeah. I kind of went into this <laughs> strange direction. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Or? Well, I, I, well I, uh, I have a question for you. We were talking about my name earlier, Rainbow, oh, yeah. <laughs> which was, uh, of course, a, it was a short story. It's, it's a taken name because I used to have hair. For all you people out there who don't see me, I'm bald. <laughs> but I used to have hair. And uh, for, a moment, for a while there, I had it uh, colored red and green. Ah. Uh, and so I got the nickname Rainbow Child. Yeah. So that's why I later on in life changed my name legally to Rainbow. But Gina... <laughs> what does that come from? yeah that's uh so I, when i was young <laughs> i was a dj or i wanted to be a dj basically so i played like drum and bass and house and stuff like this and uh, dj richard who didn't sound like a cool name so <laughs> it's a funny story actually so in 1998 i think it was we went to the love parade in berlin and on the way to the Love Parade, it's like a six-hour journey by train or something, or even longer. So we went already at three o'clock in the morning. So we've been drinking beer and stuff on the way. And then we the train stopped at uh, in Jena, which is a city in Germany. Okay. And there's a part of the city which is called Paradis. And I thought to myself, yeah, that's a cool DJ name. So <laughs> <laughs> I just added an E and it was Gina Paradis. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> and that ended up being my my internet nickname basically so outside of the internet everybody calls me richard but on the internet uh, everybody calls me gina so but is it richard or richard yeah. it's complicated yeah. so i'm born as richard yeah uh, because i'm born in poland then when we moved to germany uh, so it changed to richard and in English, it's it's written like Richard is Richard. Yeah. And then in Sweden, pff, uh, really different stuff like <laughs> Richard, uh, Richard, uh, everything. <laughs> but, but you're okay with every pronunciation of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, so when I moved to, to Germany, I was a bit like, um, it would be good if everybody knew how it's pronounced and everything. But now... After moving to different countries and everything, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically you've been moving all your life and I've just stayed put at, at one place. Uh, yeah. I, I feel when it comes to names, because uh, I, I find elderly people have problem with pronouncing the word rainbow. Oh. So very often I, I, I can hear an elderly person say, hey, hey, Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> actually happens quite often. Like, yeah, well, I, I, I can not? see the confusion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that it, I, I don't know anyone in Poland or Germany who changed their given name but here in sweden i already know like three people and i guess there are ma many many more yeah uh why do you think it is it, just because it's e much easier than in germany uh probably because it's much easier but also i think uh, i did this in 1996 mm -hmm. uh, and a few years later it actually more more or less became popular to do it so it's, it's very funny because, as you mentioned, I also know several people who changed their names. Hmm. Uh, but uh, several of those uh, I had never met uh, before I t before we've changed our names. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of <laughs> funny. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, uh, it's really fun. I mean, my best friend, is his name is Singo. Yeah. Uh, one of my best friends uh, can, can really categorize <laughs> them as you're the best, you're the second best. Uh, uh, I have some friends that I think are really close. And his name is Single. And we, we didn't know each other when we changed our names. Interesting. We just happened to run across each other and okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
that's how I know Imra. Uh, I don't know if you know her, but yeah. she was called something else. I don't even remember what what it was, because it was after she changed her name. I learned. Uh, 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 Yeah. Okay. I had no idea. She. Uh, I thought that, that was her real name. Yeah. So, I thought so too, yeah. but apparently well, not. <laughs> of course, it, it is her real name now. Now, now it is, yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> is. And Vlona, she was yeah. called Cecilia before. So, yes. does she really like that you're putting that out on the air? Yeah. It's, just, okay. <laughs> it's her second name. S- yeah. Still. Yeah. So. And, and my la- for for the record now, so people stop asking me. My second name is Simon, which was my. Uh, first name. first name before so yeah because if you uh, I was very poor back then and if you wanted to remove your name completely you had to pay I can't remember if it was three thousand or seven thousand kroner Jesus. but if you kept like it as a second name it was free yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay yeah. and the, the funniest thing it was I went up to the Skatteverk at the tax office where you do change this and I, I I go in there and I said I want to change my name mm-hmm. okay she gets, gets me a form what do you want to change this to a rainbow okay she writes down rainbow okay everything done and then she just Not, not not one question, you know. <laughs> I, I didn't have to show a passport or ID or anything. Oh. So I, I could go in there and I, I could have changed your name. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, please don't do that. <laughs> no, but I'm that, quite happy with mine. <laughs> uh, a week later, I got a form by mail, okay. you know, that I have to, uh, yeah, authorize it. You know, okay. this is okay. But <laughs> I just went out there and said, "Hmm, that what do you see?" <laughs> in Germany, it's super super difficult because you only can change. It, as far as I know, you only can change it if you have used it in publications and stuff like this. So, so I've used my Gina name uh, in on 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 a vinyl because I took the photo, so I was the artist of the artwork, yeah. and I had it on on some other uh, CDs, so I could do it, <laughs> but it's it's still uh, quite difficult. Okay, oh. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that was fun. I, yeah, I think we covered everything. Yeah, yeah. so uh, thanks a lot. No, thank you. This was And, nice. Uh, Let's do this again sometime. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>